that goes to. Hello everybody, this is Eric Jose on Making a Murderer on YouTube. I cover the Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey cases, but also as time passes I've been covering other cases such as The Staircase or OJ and many wrongful convictions of youth. Uh, I go over the documents, the photos, the videos, anything case related. So stay tuned because I have many more videos just like the one you're about to see. You all may remember Ripper on YouTube who did a very interesting video that you're about to see part of here. Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department, this is Lynn. Lynn. Hi, Andy. Can you run Sam William Henry 582? Um, okay, it shows that she's a missing person, and it lists two, Teresa Hallback. Okay. Okay, that's what you're looking for, Andy? 99 Toyota. Yep. Okay, thank you. You're so welcome. Bye-bye. Teresa Hallback. Okay. 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 Hallback. Okay. Okay. So, for those of you who don't quite remember who Ripper is, this was a creation of his. You may remember this video. It was very popular. Still very popular. A lot of views. And this is another of Ripper's videos that some of you may recall, or at least part of it. Uh, this was about, you know, poor Joey the Llama that unfortunately passed away on Ripper's property. And he, the easiest way to get rid of the waterlogged body of the Llama was to just burn it there by the, the lakeside, which actually turns out to be kind of good for the low water in the lake because the ashes are good at keeping the water clear and that sort of thing but unfortunate as it was Joey was very well loved and this is Johnny going around after the burn this is probably about uh, maybe eight months after the burn actually so a lot of these bones have been able to they've been in the Sun getting sun baked uh, the UV rays from the Sun uh, would 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 undoubtedly be helping to deteriorate these bones but you can see Johnny's taking you know some of these bones R Ripper is taking some of these bones and he's actually knocking them on rocks and uh, and and kind of illustrating that they're actually kind of holding up now you can see all the teeth that that are being found at this original burn location and and there's a grip there's a whole bunch of them down there he's picking up a few but you know there's a lot of teeth down there and that's something that's really missing in the Avery burn pit um, the accounts I see only talk about two dental fragments. Um, that's all I ever hear about. But you can see Johnny just, you know, the Ripper just keeps pulling out teeth here. So, And to give you guys an, some uh, idea of the intensity of the second burn, we're going to show you a few things here. All right, so this will give you some ideas of what the fire looked like, you know, burning throughout the night, really. Um, it's you know it was being fed for a good part of the night it was you know it, it, and, and and Johnny couldn't touch it for 24 hours like it, it was 24 hours after he started the fire before he was able to get in and start digging bones out of it uh, so yeah very interesting um, but yeah there he is with the there he is if you see him right there he's with a blower and he's using a blower to get more oxygen in on that fire to make it burn even hotter I mean he's, he was doing everything he could to make this fire burn hot all right so this is from the affidavit of Josh Redant and this is kind of how we figure out how far away he was uh, from basically Avery's trailer and the uh, Yonda burn barrel so it says here by the by this time there had already been news media coverage of Teresa Hallbach's disappearance that included coverage of the Avery property I told the officers that I saw a fire orange in color when I was driving from the Redant sand and gravel pit to the hunting camp on October 31st of 2005 at approximately 5 p.m. I told the officers that I saw the fire from the direction of the Avery property because it was dark or getting dark when I saw the fire. I was not sure where exactly the fire was located. I did not observe any smoke coming from the fire. Okay, so to get an idea of what Josh Redant's path would have been uh, going to the bur to the deer camp. Well, here, let's show you a few things. This is where Stephen Avery's trailer is. This is where this burn pit would be. This is approximately where Barb's burn barrel would have been, right about there. 
uh, off the corner of this trailer basically but right out here somewhere okay then we move this way okay this is the path that Josh Redant would have been taking to get to the deer camp okay so by the time he gets to the deer camp he's about a thousand feet away just a little over a thousand feet away and I'll show you that in a second that means as he's approaching this he is about uh, you know a thousand to maybe even fifteen hundred feet away so this is another vantage point with an actual real picture and it's gonna show us here you know where things are so here's the hunting camp right here right here is Stephen Avery's residence here this is the Yonda residence here okay the burn barrel is approximately right where the tip of my mouse is right now it's right off the corner of, of there off of uh, what was Barb's trailer and the fire pit is approximately right where the tip right where the tip of my mouse is now that would be where the fire pit is so you can see how close together that burn barrel and that fire pit are they're not really very far apart at all so the other thing to point out here is this is the road as you can see up here you can see it says road to hunting camp right okay so this is the road to the hunting camp that Josh Redant would have been taking to get to the hunting camp and this is where he would have been observing from okay now I'm gonna move to the to the to the thing that calculates the distance the basically the distance from right here whoops the distance from right here to here and, and, and that I'm gonna show you the calculation of that distance so that you guys will understand what what Johnny is trying to do so you guys will understand what Ripper is trying to do when he makes his you know burn barrel uh, video here and he's gonna do like a side by side I believe uh, with an actual open fire and and then a burn barrel fire and 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 how those are gonna look different how we're gonna notice that with an open fire the flames will be a bit more spread out and with a burn barrel fire you're not gonna see so much spread out flames but you might see them kind of reaching up higher uh, you know in and you know reaching higher than they normally would so I think that's gonna be the interesting thing here folks hope you guys are gonna enjoy it just wanted to give you a little uh, preview of what what's coming from uh, Ripper on YouTube over there and I think it'll be interesting so hope you guys all tune in okay and this is just to illustrate right here this is the deer camp so this would be the closest point that Josh Redant could observe Avery really and the in the fires uh, and from that point there, it would be 1,038 feet, essentially. So that's a fairly significant distance, but that is the calculation. That's We want to make this, you know, we want when, when Ripper does this experiment, we want him to be trying to recreate the similar distance that, that Josh Redant is describing in his affidavit. So we went to the trouble to, to really figure this kind of this stuff out a bit. Uh, so we hope you guys will find the video interesting, obviously, uh, and, and, and we'll tune in to check it out. The fire did not appear to be spread out, and its flames appeared to be about two and a half to three feet high in height. These characteristics were consistent with my personal knowledge of burn barrel fires. Because I observed these characteristics, I assumed the fire was contained in a burn barrel. I did not see whether the fire was actually contained in a burn barrel. After I told them this information, officers asked me to follow them by automobile over public highways to the business area of Avery Auto's, Avery's Auto Salvage, where law enforcement had a command post. There I made a written statement at approximately 5.30 p.m. Less than one week, week later, I was provided... Uh, after I provided that written statement, two officers who I believe were from the Wisconsin Department of Justice met me at, a, at the hunting camp to discuss the fire I saw. I remember them asking if I was sure that I saw what I said I saw. It seemed to me they weren't it seemed to me they weren't satisfied with my statement about the fire. Specifically, it seemed to me they wanted me to change my story to include a larger fire. Because they were reluctant to accept my story as true, I eventually asked them what they wanted me to say. They told me all they wanted was the truth. I advised them that I had been telling the truth. Um, very interesting statement from Josh Redant. But to get to what's the important bit for us in here in determining how far he was away, we have to look at this right here. When I was driving from the Redant sand and gravel pit to the hunting camp on October 31st of 2005 at approximately 5 p.m. That's another thing that Ripper is going to be taking into account is that he's going to be trying to do this 
at a time when it will approximate the exact, you know, conditions uh, at that time in uh, in Wisconsin uh, in October in 2005. So there's a lot of things we're kind of trying to calculate into this. So anyways, we're trying to make this very interesting and very, um, you know, as close to the conditions as possible uh, to really get a, a good gauge of what the difference between a burn barrel fire and an open fire will look like. Just to kind of show it again from kind of another angle, this one a little bit closer to Avery's and Barb's here. So just to get an idea, burn barrel is where the magnifying glass would be right now, right where that magnifying glass is, that's where the burn barrel would be. Where the magnifying glass is now, that is where Steven's burn pit would be. So that's pretty much where the burn pit is off the back of the garage. Now you can see both of these locations, you know, are somewhat, there's somewhat of a view out this way. This would be the road that Josh Redout was taking in to, to uh, you know, that to get to the deer camp. This is where he would have been observing the fires that he's talking about in the affidavit, right on this road. So, uh, potentially he could have gone a little further for some reason. If you know, I don't know if he did or not, but he could have potentially been here. But no matter what, we're looking at basically somewhere between a thousand feet to maybe 1300 feet away uh, observing distance and that's what that's what Johnny or Ripper is going to be illustrating in his video so